forward on this computer. Welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, and welcome to the Blurring the Lines podcast, episode 169. I am your host and frequent flyer, Peter Nicolaitis, and joining me as always is my co-host and travel agent, Adam Bell. How you hey, doing, Peter? Adam? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to serving you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is, this is pretty hilarious. So, uh, yeah, if you're just tuning in you're probably wondering what the heck are these two guys babbling on about which is no different from any other episode yes yes exactly yes (laughs) so we've got some travel plans and a friend of the show scott (laughs) wilsey i should probably tell him but maybe i'll just let him find out here (laughs) so as we know um i will be uh making the rounds in june flying all over the place and um uh, my itinerary tentatively was Colorado, Las Vegas, Nevada, um, Portland, Oregon, Nashville, Tennessee. And now it's changed up to Corpus Christi, Texas, (laughs) Portland, Oregon, and Grand Bahama, the Bahamas. (laughs) (laughs) My travel plans are changing on a daily basis here, but I like how they're shaping up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's that's within less than, uh, I mean, we're not even talking about 12 hours. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't even like I just changed my plan. So anyway, um, (laughs) listeners are super confused. Uh, I was going to go visit a a friend of mine back from the Vermont days who's now out in California, uh, but they're going to be in Texas uh during the first weekend of june so i'm gonna meet up there uh from there i was gonna go to las vegas to visit my former neighbors but what i was hoping for was that a um uh one of my vendors would fly me out there Mm -hmm. and then my vendor's a space cadet and uh, they didn't realize that that conference that they were going to fly me out to just happened last week (laughs) Uh-huh. <laughs> not next month <laughs> so i will be flying straight up to portland oregon to visit my friend and friend of the show scott wilsey and i'll be staying there for a few days and then i was going to stay there for i was going to say like four or five days and then i was going to fly to nashville to see you but you're not going to be in nashville <laughs> you're going to be in the bahamas and it just occurred to me and you while we were just talking why don't I just go to the Bahamas? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I've been to Nashville a few times. Yeah. I know what Nashville's <laughs> like, so let's, let's mix it up. So it won't be hot chicken. It'll be hot fish, hot conch. They probably have some kind of chicken there. Baham- bah- Bahamian chicken. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they have chicken. <laughs> <laughs> they have chicken. <laughs> what airport do I want to fly into on the Bahamas? There are a bunch of them. Uh, Freeport. Freeport. Uh, Freeport's F- the international fpo 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 okay free po got it mm-hmm. all right so, we... so now yeah now the question is when to actually arrive and and go so this will be fun this will be fun <laughs> ah all right so peter's traveling and you are obviously you're traveling to the bahamas and you do this pretty regularly right well um this will be my second trip to the bahamas i mean that's a pattern yeah, that's patterns. <laughs> Two times. Yeah, so we're making making a pattern. The uh, we we really had a good time fishing there last year. Bone fishing, it's just sport fishing, and then fly fishing on top of that, which is even more sport fishy. If you know, if you want to catch fish, you throw a net over the side of the boat and you catch hundreds of fish. If you want to make a game of it, you use a fishing pole. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you said this was a, I thought you said this was a, a sport. <laughs> it sounds like cleaning up trash, you know, you yeah. drag a rake out there and you're good. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, and then a few years ago, uh, the Bahamas had the hurricane go through. And mm. so they are working now to, to restore the mangroves. So the mangroves okay. had died because they were covered with seawater. Um, I guess I, I don't really understand. Well, they get, they get, they get fresh water from the rain, but their roots are in the salt water. 
So it wouldn't seem like being completely submerged in salt water for a couple of days would kill all the mangroves, but it did. Um, so it goes to show what I know about mangrove biology. <laughs> <laughs> got it <laughs> i am no mangrove biologist expert by any stretch so. <laughs> but it is cool so they're in process of um doing the recovery on that and uh so you know maybe you'll you'll find your a new philanthropy for you <laughs> I, you never know you never know i mean what I'm am gonna i gonna be... do in the summer i'm gonna go to the bahamas and plant mangroves sounds great so so it's an 18 hour flight with two stops from oregon to the bahamas wow so i'm wondering if maybe i shouldn't hop home for a day <laughs> <laughs> rest up and then hop another flight there i gotta got figure this out so so we took to... yeah we took alaska air when we when we went to um seattle Mm -hmm. we took alaska air from nashville and they had a non-stop flight interesting because i'm looking at um well here's the thing yeah okay so one of them there's a uh 10 hour layover in miami yeah there you go that's that's why it's so long so uh it you know, seems like yeah i gotta i gotta figure this out generally speaking i like miami but yep. generally speaking i don't like flying into the miami airport yeah and i mean that's just a 10 hour like that's like uh yeah i gotta figure this out well there's some some there's some some uh logistics still uh still needed here but we'll, we'll figure <laughs> it out so yeah so we had uh you know i do want to thank the robots who reached out to listen to our podcast uh last week i mean we published on friday and on saturday we had over 1600 hits that lasted less than 10 seconds each they were scouring for Elon Musk buying Twitter and they found useless information and they moved right on. <laughs> At least they didn't linger, right? So they didn't that, linger. <laughs> that was nice of them. Just like, go on, get out of here. Just beat it. <laughs> shoo, shoo. Shoo. Uh, yeah. But it was, a, I was like, we got 1600 hits. I was like excited. I'm like, we talked about something somebody really wanted to hear about. And then, no. Nah, Not they, really. Not really. Not really. Yeah. No. <laughs> Even the robot went on. Went on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i mean who knows is who can account for a robot's attention span you know it's it's really hard so well, maybe it only took 10 seconds and it, it accumulated everything it needed i don't know <laughs> it's possible i mean robots are pretty fast these days so. <laughs> oh, oh boy cool. so what else is going on besides travel and fish and stuff so i i got my apple watch we talked about that um and and I've got it set up for base stuff. And you've asked the question whether I like it. Right now, I don't. Um, because it's, it's, it's a wearable computer. Yes. I want, I want a watch <laughs> that has some computer tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> the, the apple watch has some computer tendencies like you know sometimes you need to reboot it and stuff and, yeah uh, yeah now overall i mean it it does a ton of stuff i mean it does way more than i need it to and i there's still lots of things that i want to learn about and play with it um just because i think it's kind of interesting i am a computer guy so i do find it interesting but do i need all that stuff and functionality on my watch Mm -hmm. not not so much because i hate alerts speaking of alerts my phone's going off but i hate <laughs> alerts on my watch so i don't want my phone to ring me i, would, I don't want my text message to ring me i do yep. want to have the ability to do to take a look at those if i want i just want zero notifications and you can turn that off <laughs> yeah you can you can definitely customize the notifications on the watch mm -hmm. yeah my my use of the apple watch varies i generally you know as we've talked about on the show before like i've wanted i wanted a fitness tracker mm -hmm. that was you know primarily there but i also want the ability the ability to just go out for a run and leave the phone behind mm -hmm. and you know with cellular and that's that's why i like that and you know you can even it's not a fun process but you can compose and send an email 
you can text message people. Um, you can send audio messages. There's a lot of functionality on the watch that I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's also, you, you definitely can start to um, get uh, down a rabbit hole if you want it to act like a computer, you know, <laughs> and that's where it becomes, it becomes a little uh, less than optimal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and I did, well, so the setup was easy took it out of the box it completely you know i downloaded the app on my phone the apple watch app uh and it just went to town took all my settings all my applications everything i mean it was completely out of the box ready to go within minutes i mean i i charged it first yep. but within minutes of me pairing at them it just was instant uh yep. my only complaint was and not really a complaint it was just a uh it's a way of doing things, you know, like we've talked about firewalls allowing zero access and then allowing others, you know, adding exceptions where the Apple Watch took everything that it possibly could do with my phone and made it active yes. on the phone or yes. on the watch. And yep. I get it. That's a that's a methodology. And I, and I can appreciate that because most people want all the functionality. Well, <laughs> and, and most people probably don't know how to set up the functionality yeah yeah you know so you're doing it for them to make things easy to use you got to remember this is apple we're talking about right mm -hmm. and you know historically they have a a, a culture of you know we want to set things up for you so you don't have to think about stuff in fact we prefer if you don't think <laughs> because when you start to think we get in trouble you know <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah. yes so I got, I've got my home screen the way that I want it. It's not 100% the way that I want it, but I can live with it. Like I want my date on there. I've got my time. I want the seconds, uh, but I don't have the seconds on there, at least not on the screen that I've chosen. I've got the temperature, but I've got a timer, which I use a timer pretty often. I've yep. got the, the activity circles. I don't fully understand the activity circles. Uh, it, ah, I can talk to you about those. <laughs> All right. And then I've got the uh, start and activity, the little running man, so I can start my activity. Yep. And, start a workout of some yeah. sort. Yeah. And that's that's really nice for me to have all on that home screen ready to just poke it and go. So, which clock, which watch face are you using? Uh, I don't know which one it is. E looks like infograph modular i believe okay yep. yeah it's one of the i didn't add anything it was one of the yeah. default lists and yep. i liked it i liked the big face of the other one that i looked at but i really wanted the seconds and i wanted the date because yep i just don't commit the date to memory each morning <laughs> got it <laughs> i know that feeling <laughs> so. it's like my today's friday has it been friday all day or has it been friday for like three days because some days it feels like three days <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah uh so so i'll let you one one little hint um what i do is i use multiple watch faces depending mm -hmm. on my activity so for That's every good. day yeah so for like everyday use um when i'm in i don't even need uh yeah world time that's it for everyday use like when i'm working or i'm in the office i have the world time face yeah chosen right mm -hmm. uh the reason i like it is you know you you have to do a little mental math but it shows like what time it is in different cities around the world mm-hmm and that's helpful for me with, you know, dealing with people in California, Colorado, London, and um, uh, Mumbai frequently mm -hmm. having to do those, you know, calculations is like, okay, it's a little easier. Mm -hmm. um, the second face I use is when I am teaching a yoga class, which is the same one you have, the infograph modular. Mm -hmm. But what I have is a bunch of preset of the most commonly used timers at the bottom. Yeah as well as my music, my now playing controls. So when I, I use my Apple watch to control the music for my playlists during mm -hmm. my yoga classes. Okay. So that's what I do there. Um, the third one that I use is just plain infograph, not the modular. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the difference there is it can fit more complications on the home screen. 
Right. And that's what I use when I'm running. So I've got my navigation app, my running, my podcast, my music, uh, a timer, the weather, my activity circles, which I'll explain to you, mm -hmm. and the August home app so that I can unlock my front door. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I do have the other face that I was fooling around with, but I don't have it active. But yep. yeah, what I need is just like you described when I have when I go to the gym, I slide it to my activity face. Boom. <laughs> and then normally I use I've been using the unity one with no complications whatsoever. Just mm -hmm. just show me a, an analog clock dial. Yeah. And I use that to try to minimize distractions. And so so I just mm -hmm. put that up there. So cool. So there you go. So one ring to control them all. Or three. If or you're three. three. Well, <laughs> yeah. So the activity circles. Yeah. What are those? So it, Apple introduced these. I don't know. Has this been around from the whole time from the Apple Watch? Maybe. Um, they are, there are three rings. One represents standing. The other represents uh, working out. And the other one represents, oh, sorry. What represents exercise. And the other one represents move. Right. Uh, I always get exercise and move kind of interchangeably uh, con confused. I, I forget which is which one, you know, but, um, but your move goal is the amount of calories that you want to burn. Mm -hmm. The exercise ring is the number of minutes spent exercising. Mm -hmm. And the stand ring is the number of hours to the day that your arm has waved around <laughs> to get some movement. <laughs> so they all make perfect sense. Yeah. Right. Um, I will tell you that I definitely was the most irate at my watch on days when I would literally be standing at my desk for four hours at a time. And then I would look down and it would have not have recorded any stand time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not, counting hours that you stand it's counting movement and wobblies of the arm yeah so what would happen is every you know hour or so at 10 minutes before the hour it's like almost there just stand for you know just just stand for 10 minutes or something and then, yeah. you know some days i'd be so distracted i would or so focused i would not wobble my arm around or or whatnot mm -hmm. and uh, that was annoying mm -hmm. so i cranked that one down to six hours, the minimum. Yeah. I was just like, I, cause I just ignore it. Right. But I want credit to succeed. Right. So, so I was like, <laughs> um, but I cranked my, um, my exercise ring is uh, usually 60 minutes per day. Mm -hmm. And my move goal, I think is 650 calories per day. Okay. And on average, I, I generally do way more than those. Um, yeah. but you know, it's just like, it's just a reminder, you know, get out, do something, get out and move. Um, and almost, you know, always when I'm out doing a run, uh, you know, it'll be like that somewhere a few miles in exercise rings, close, you know, move ring closed. And nice. I was like, yeah, that's great. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to get that now. And, you know, cause I, I always focused, focused on the steps, getting yeah. 10,000 Step steps. Counts. Yep. Um, which is fine, but there wasn't any way to like throw that in there as a primary counter, but it is down there if I'm interested in finding it. So I installed an app called Pedometer Plus Plus. Pedometer Plus Plus. Yep. And it has a watch app version as well. And I have that on my home, um, on the, um, the watch face for the world map. So it's okay. in the bottom right corner. And I can see that I've taken approximately 465 steps today. <laughs> now that does not count the first couple hours of the day when i was walking around the house not carrying my phone or wearing my watch <laughs> so, yeah yeah so. i've been to the gym today and i've got 4500 steps and 2.26 miles but didn't my rowing doesn't count as miles either you're slightly ahead of me <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i can do that because i've got it well and i've got to adjust mine um, my move is only 410 calories, which is not enough. So I need to up that. And then yeah. my exercise is only 30 minutes because those, these were the defaults that it set yeah, up. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and I want it to be 60. Uh, yep. I want to, you know, work out in the morning for, yep. um, I mean, even though I'm there an hour, I don't work out for a full hour. Right. <laughs> there's stretching, yep. there's cool down there. Yeah. So it will 
carry it will catch other stuff though like if you start going out for a walk or you know like if i make a few trips up and down the stairs here mm -hmm. at home it will record those as exercise times. Yeah, okay even without it popping up saying it looks like you're exercising you know it'll just say like heart rate was elevated while i took it oh we're gonna call that some exercise so it will yeah. capture some stuff for you without telling you cool yeah, because I want to do 30 minutes of exercise in the morning, true exercise, and then I yep. want to walk for 30 minutes in the evening every day. So 60 minutes of activity. Yep. Not necessarily like heavy, heavy activity, but activity. So well, ironically, so I, I was getting close to the heaviest that I've ever weighed. And all that muscle, was, right? Uh, all, yeah, it was muscle. But there was some fat too, because <laughs> uh, I was sitting at two thirty, and that's that's the heaviest I've ever been. I'm like, okay, well, I need to get serious about this, and I lost my fitness tracker, and then I was just, you know, doing whatever, and finally I got the Apple Watch. It like, I'm gonna get serious about this. I weighed myself. I've lost nine pounds with no fitness tracker. <laughs> huh? How can that be? How could, how could I possibly lose weight without a fitness tracker? <laughs> I know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but yeah, I'm at 221 and I've been there for a couple of days. So my goal was 215. Yep. Like, oh, great. I only have to lose seven pounds now. <laughs> You're ahead of the game, man. <laughs> I'm curious, on that note, how much does your weight fluctuate during the course of the day? During a day, it could go typically around three pounds that's up it. and down. Uh, that's, but that's in a week, funny. in a week, I could do five or six pounds. In, in I a, mean, if I start, you know, my day and I um, I weigh myself like first thing in the morning, and then I weigh myself like after I eat, and then after I run, I routinely can see like a ten pound fluctuation over the course of the day. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah. Like if I'm dehydrated after a run and I haven't eaten much, mm -hmm. I, I can be like in the low one fifties. But if I, you know, like measure myself after I've pounded a bunch of water and had a meal and, and stuff, it's like I can be in the low one sixties. That's no. it's kind well, of funny. And I wonder if that is you weigh less than me. I mean, that's yeah. a it's a bigger your food is a bigger percentage weight than it is percentage wise yeah but you would think that you would eat more than me too so you'd think mm -hmm. that your weight might fluctuate more like when i like when i look at my stock market portfolio and i see these <laughs> massive spikes and massive losses every day but they're still within a few percent you know? uh -huh. <laughs> and still very harrowing <laughs> So I had a funny story to share about uh, running and uh, exercise, et cetera, et cetera, yesterday. So I was supposed to go mountain biking with a friend yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I dragged my mountain bike out of the basement and the back tire, which is tubeless, was completely flat and yeah. it would not hold air. And I took a look at it and it was just plasticky goo sealant had you know was everywhere there's no way it was going to hold a seal right right so i was like well i don't have time to take it to the bike shop to fix it they're not going to be able to do it today so let me try it myself and after about an hour of <laughs> goo gone and spraying and scraping and scrubbing i was like this is not happening today <laughs> screw this yeah a um, friend of mine who's another yoga teacher, she said she had a cold and she had asked, she wanted to know if I could sub for her um, that night. And I had said, you know, I can't have made plans to go mountain biking. And then I looked back and by that time she had found another sub. So I was like, well, you know what? I'll just turn this into my long run day. And I was mm -hmm. supposed to do 13 miles yesterday. Mm hmm um it was in the high 60s and humid yesterday mm -hmm. the hottest run of the year so far <laughs> and this was fairly certainly my worst run ever yeah. this was now i was not asking myself why am i running why do i hate i want to stop running i hate this kind of thing but i did have questions about like can I even 
manage doing an ultra marathon? Do I have any business doing that? I am struggling with this and it was just nasty. And then at 10.83 miles, I slipped and fell and I had a really bad fall. Oh man. I will not drop my pants to show you how bad my uh, shin <laughs> is scraped up, but it is, there's a nice gash about this long Ooh. and, uh, and it hurt and <laughs> it sucked and I was not happy um, because I've been falling a lot lately on my, um, on my, my long runs. I, I trip and almost every time yesterday was a little different, but almost every time um, my left foot, I'll, I'll not see a stump or a rock or a, you know, something mm -hmm. I catch it and just go down. And that's happened like my last three runs in a row. Huh? And it's annoying. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, is it that I'm just spacing out? I'm not paying attention. I'm trying to figure out, I think I like, I have a little, a little bit of a blind spot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe I need to start wearing my contacts again to confirm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I really don't know what's, you know, what, what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. I mean, part but of me, annoying. part of me thinks it's, it's like you said, maybe a blind spot or as you fatigue, you take less uh, attention to those uh, steps. Yeah. And, and I was definitely cognizant of that this time because my running coach told me it's like you know it sounds like you just you know need to be stay more focused and pay attention mm -hmm. and so i was like okay i'll you know i'll try to you know to do that and i was i was taking breaks i was checking in and you know constantly beating myself up saying my you're tired you know like how can you do this this is ridiculous you're never going to be in shape in time for the race and <laughs> blah 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 but what really got me this time is i tripped i think i just tripped over my own two feet I yeah. think my this time because I felt the catch on the right side this time, and I was on a place which was mostly road, so there weren't roots and rocks and things. <laughs> um, but in a rare occurrence, I fell on a, a little bit of a downhill, mm -hmm. and I just scraped right along the rocks, and it's it's pretty nasty, and it's bandaged up, and I've got the bandages wrapped in an ace bandage, and. Every now and then I can still feel, still feels like my skin is crawling underneath it. It's oh yeah. <laughs> so it's not fun. So uh, yeah, that said. Um, and, and also yesterday for the first time, I fell short of my target mileage. I called it at 12 miles. I did not make all 13. Oh, man. Keeping, in, keeping in mind that, you know, this was a mile and I almost a mile and a quarter after I had fallen. <laughs> And, yeah. you know, I walked part of it and I was grumping and growing. And then, you know, then I got a little bit of second wind. I was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not going to let this get me, you know, but I'm like, you know, I started running again, but I'm like, but now I got to be really careful. Cause if I fall again, then I'm really going to hate myself. And <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so it was, it was not a great, it was not a great day. Well, you, you might not. Uh, well, the a friend of mine, he does those ultra marathons. And he talked about how he, he pretty sure he fractured his ankle, like, you know, in a two third point of the thing on a trail run. He still finished. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do that. <laughs> like, wow. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, it was the most pain. It was the most pain I've ever experienced in my life. And, uh -huh. and, and you just kept running on that, huh? <laughs> yep. Well, endorphins. Endorphins, determination, and stupidity can do amazing things. Yeah, well, and, and my concern is, and, and he's a doctor, and oh, so it's it's not like he he doesn't have the intellect to understand the the long term repercussions. Because if you your feet are complicated, yes. if you break one of those bones and you keep jamming it into other bones, you may have a permanent situation on your feet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed that that's definitely a concern so i mean i would be like i mean i'd be thinking well is that i can't i don't want to make it where i can never run again yep <laughs> yeah but he powered through and he still runs now so i guess he knew himself yes, he made it. okay <laughs> you know maybe it wasn't the best choice ever but a decent choice yeah, <laughs> yeah it worked out <laughs> hey another question for you when is your flight when is your return flight home from the bahamas uh two 
2 p.m. It got moved. I thought it was uh, seven, but I'll get home about two. But we're we're flying out of Freeport. Um, yeah, I fly like, out of Freeport when it's like 10 or 11. All right, cool. I'm going to plan my flights to because um, I don't have any transportation or anything booked down there. Mm -hmm. So um, I will probably plan for something like a 12 o'clock departure or something like that to tag along with you if that works. Sure. I mean, I won't go to Nashville with you, but I just <laughs> <laughs> Now, why does it take 24 hours to get home from the, th that doesn't make any sense. Oh no, it's 12 hours, 12 hours. Okay, I got it. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, look at that. 12, 12 p.m. flight arrives in Boston 10 hours later, 10.30. Sounds good. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, this is, this is going to be like my first real vacation in like three years, man. This is going to be fun. Cool. Yeah, I've got a... I've got to update my calendar. There, it's something. Something's weird on it right now. Yeah. Oh, I messed around with Delta and different lines, and I don't under, I've got to figure it out. How if you get an email from my airline, it's yep. able to automatically populate it on my calendar. So yeah, the question is, I've noticed that too. Sometimes Gmail has done that. And sometimes I've had to do that with the um, Apple Mail app. Okay. And maybe, maybe the app itself too, maybe the Southwest app will dump it on the calendar. Yep. Th those are all things like, you know, after you buy a flight, don't you think everybody should have a little iCal link that you can just say like, click add to, how to calendar right there. Yeah. Why is that? why is that not a thing yeah you know uh so because i'm looking at an event right now on the it, it, it's six o'clock in the morning when i'm going to be somewhere else so on a different I'm like okay whatever i'll figure that out yeah I'll, exactly. I'll delete that <laughs> yep whatever i'll figure that out that's exactly how i feel <laughs> oh traveling it's so much fun <laughs> yeah uh, yeah whatever i'll figure that out yeah all right. Uh, so I have, I mean, we, we've talked about the Apple Watch. Um, yes. I mentioned, uh, I guess this is sort of nifty-ish. So I've been wanting to have a portable monitor to take with yes. my iPad. I remember when you bought this uh, a mm -hmm. few months ago, right? Yeah. So I bought the Desk Lab portable monitor and it's a, it's a 15 inch monitor. It's pretty, I mean, it's, it's actually a little heavier and bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, it is not convenient to connect up to my iPad. Uh, so I've got a little dongle here. Yep. There we go. So it's a, it's got the lightning in dongle on it. And then out of it, it's got a USB-C connector in the end and the HDMI. So yep. you've got to go out, you got to power the thing with the USB-C. Yep. And then the HDMI goes to the video. And then you're supposed to, and I haven't actually got to test this yet. I've been testing it with other systems. Uh, is then you should be able to use the screen as a touch screen with your iPad. Which it's a lot of cool. cables. Yep. I mean, that's a that's really tethering me down way more than I anticipated it being. I was expecting a cable coming into my <laughs> <laughs> monitor <laughs> i still find that you know like ipad things when you want them to do things that you're used to a laptop doing they take a little longer than you know what you expect or is a little more complicated than, mm -hmm. than what you expected yeah and um yeah so doesn't really surprise me. Um, the, at the yoga studio where I teach, uh, the teacher just swapped out the laptop with an iPad for our Zoom virtual classes. Mm -hmm. But she, uh, you know, back when the pandemic started, she had bought this external microphone and it's about, you know, an inch square and, you know, about half an inch, you know, on the, on the side mm -hmm. and it has one transmitter and one receiver. So you just like put it on your collar or something while you're teaching. I've recently started, I prefer using my AirPods instead. Mm -hmm. It's a little less bulky 
And the other nice part about that is that way, if a student who's on Zoom talks and has a question, only the people on Zoom can hear it and me, not like everybody in the class as well. So mm -hmm. it's a little, you know, it's a nice little bit of segregation there. Um, but to use that adapter, she bought an adapter because it uses a standard headphone jack to talk into the, to the MacBook. Mm -hmm. uh, when you plug the adapter in, it also steals not just the microphone in, but the audio out function. Ah. And on the iPad, if you've got an audio out jack plugged in, there's no other way to route the audio out anywhere else. <laughs> so she couldn't hear anybody you know, mm -hmm. as long as the microphone was turned in. So, and then when I was there last night, I noticed the MacBook was back again. <laughs> <laughs> so then, well, I've got a, well, so I tried, one thing I tried to do getting output out of my iPad into my Apple TV is when I go down to the farm, I have terrible internet down there. I've got satellite yeah. internet. So it's email at best. Sounds like the Bahamas. Yeah. So I thought I could uh, put videos on my iPad, like subscription videos, like Netflix. I, I download them as part of my subscription. And then I would be able to play them on my Apple TV from my iPad. It yep. doesn't allow that. Nope. <laughs> does it allow apple tv to play from your ipad to the tv uh it wouldn't surprise me if it did see i don't have an apple tv right now so i don't know but friend of the show scott wilsey i bet you can tell you the answer <laughs> right off the top of his head because i do have an apple tv um and i do have i do now have a uh, apple subscription so i mean i can i can watch things now on app i guess it's apple tv or apple plus or whatever they call their tv subscription i got it for ted lasso got it. <laughs> so, so i have that so i'm wondering if i download things in apple if i could download them on my ipad and play them on my apple tv yeah, but i know i can't do it with netflix or hulu or amazon prime video yeah, that I, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll have to give that, give that a try. It, it's not as important. So ironically, I'm getting fiber at the farm. Gigabit fiber. And when does that start? <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> so wow. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't received it yet. So we get it through the electric company. I don't, I'm sure up there. Uh, so the electric companies were prevented from providing internet service. Uh, it was federal yep. law, and then yep. that has been removed. So now yep. electric companies can provide internet access, and they're bringing fiber. So this, you know, my rural town, the co-op, the electricity co-op, is bringing fiber to my house. So they'll let me know when it's been run uh, from my pole to the house, and then they'll schedule a time with me to do the install so cool i can't wait and it's it's 79 dollars. it's fantastic price <laughs> i i just hope that the service is good too well yeah i hope so too yeah it's like <laughs> i hope it's not one of those like oh yeah you get you know gigabit speeds on a good day it's yeah a good day i don't uh i i don't anticipate getting full gigabit speed mm -hmm. i don't anticipate having 100 uptime what I, <laughs> I just, it's got to be better than satellite. And then what I think I'll do is I'll reduce my satellite cost to the yeah, bare uh, minimum. It's and... got to be better than satellite. That's a safe <laughs> assumption. <laughs> but I'll keep my satellite on a minimum program. So if the, if the fiber is out, it's then I'll, I'll have that because saddle, I have a generator there. So yep, yep. if, if I have no, uh, if the fiber's out and the electricity's out, I could still run the generator and power my satellite and get some kind of signal. Yep. Yep. So, eh. Yep. Farming That's problems. Cool. <laughs> First world farming problems. First world farming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. What else do we have? I will, I will admit I'm a little artificially uh, time constrained today. 
mm-hmm. um, because I have movie tickets in half an hour to go see Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Nice. So I'm excited. <laughs> um, yeah. So so there's that. Um, but did we hit all of the things that we wanted to hit? Yeah, I mean, we hit the light topics. We've still got longer topics that we've got to, you know. We've been punting on these longer topics <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> so, uh, but that's okay. Nobody wants to hear us pontificate long for a long, long time. So the big news is we've got a travel plan coming. Um, we're going to have an offsite in the Bahamas mm-hmm. and discuss that business venture that we've been discussing now for, uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I may have to buy a laptop. We talked about this a little bit beforehand too. I, um, I may have to buy a, um, uh, a laptop for this trip if I'm going to be, you know, cause I'm going to be gone for a few, uh, few weeks and I do not want to carry this big giant bulky HP thing that I have. Yeah. So, so it's looking more and more and more and more like I should have just gotten the M1 <laughs> MacBook air when it first came out and just sucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well if if i had the choice like if i didn't have this macbook pro now yep. i would buy a 13 inch macbook pro that's what i would buy and that would mm-hmm. be my ultimate travel device yep yeah and i think i still think that an air will do me good because a lot of what I do, I just spend time, you know, doing remote desktops to things. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need a ton of processing power. And, you know, it's just, it doesn't have to be that fancy. So yeah. it, do- it doesn't, but, you know, having the processing power sure is nice if you ever need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that, that's where if I do need it, I'll spin it up on aws <laughs> you know <laughs> they do you know you can do macintosh you can do mac o- not macintosh mac os <laughs> is now a supported um a supported uh, operating system on aws huh. so you not you don't get the desktop or anything it's just like a, a terminal it's like a linux box you know, oh, okay. yeah okay you know but if you want to run mac as like a server or something there you go it's an option so, mm-hmm. so. it's it's unixy it's unixy <laughs> well, on that note, I have a movie to get to. All right. Um, and you have a Friday to get to. I do. So do something good with your Friday. Um, I'm going to be changing my flight plans for like the sixth time today. Because <laughs> I realized that I had booked a June 8th departure, which is a June 9th arrival in the Bahamas. Mm hmm. And that's uh, means I'm going to miss a day of my reservation because I had a three day minimum, eighth, ninth, 10th through the 11th or, you know, eighth, ninth and 10th, three nights. Okay. So uh, rather than miss a day, sorry, Scott, I'm opting for an extra day in the Bahamas versus an extra day in Oregon. Man, that's awful. Yeah, so I am going to send you, um, I'll share you, I'll share my notes for my flights. Sweet. I will send mine to you as well. And with that, I think you should probably take us out. You should probably take us out to the Bahamas. Take us out to the Bahamas. Bermuda, Bahama. (laughs) I want to go there. (laughs) Listener, we do want your feedback. If you'd like to discuss a particular topic, then you can drop us a line at www.blurringthelinespodcast.com. If you'd like to learn more about us, you can learn more about Peter at Paradigm Consulting Company, LLC, ParadigmCC.com, YogaWithPeter.com, FriendsWithBeer.com, or at Nicolaitis on the Twitter by Elon Musk. And you, you can find me at Sublime Computer Services at www.SublimeComp.com or at Sublime Comp on the also- Twitter. You can also find us in the Bahamas, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> we are not signing autographs while we're there. We're taking we're taking the week off. <laughs> you know what? I'll I'll sign autographs. <laughs> Adam's taking a week off from signing autographs. I will sign autographs. So, there you go. On that um, note, I think someone should push 
the big red button. Big red button. So how do you get